Hey everybody, Matt Cutler here from Block Native. Excited to give you a walkthrough of our brand new EtherNow Transaction Explorer. It's a first of its kind observability platform for looking into the public mempool of Ethereum. Um, really lets you see the inner workings of what's going on, how transactions sort of go through their journey from uh, pending to confirmed, how blocks get created, sort of how the chain works. Um, it's publicly available in a preview release format right now, and it's made possible by a grant from the Ethereum Foundation. Um, all you need to do is take your favorite desktop browser and point it to ethernow.xyz. And when you do, we will load in the top 1,000 transactions from the public mempool into your browser. We're looking at Ethereum mainnet. This is all live. This is happening you know, as we speak. Um, and what's basically happening is, is we sort everything here by gas price, but we can also sort it by newest first. So you see new transactions come in. Here on the right, we have some basic visualizations. We'll be building these out over time. Um, this gray bar shows new transactions that are entering the mempool in the current slot. And then when a new block comes in, that'll flip over and we'll see the light blue bar. That's the number of transactions in the block and the gray are the transactions that were received but not included. So you can sort of see sort of general mempool pressure and things like that. We have some top level descriptive things here about sort of ERC-20 versus ERC-721, contents of the mempool, EOA versus smart contracts, and um, some about estimated gas needed. Now we're really trying to emphasize the liveness of, of Ethereum because that's how it works. Transactions are constantly coming in, blocks are constantly being created, transactions are changing state, and it's sort of interesting to, to see all that happen in real time. So we see there's this countdown here to the next block. I'm just gonna select a transaction. We can see that it's pending. Um, we can see its details. And then this has enough gas, so not touching anything. It just flips state from pending to confirmed. We can see that it went into block 1909 in block position 117 out of 147 transactions in the block. And we can see its journey right here. It went from pending to confirmed in that time frame. Now, if I select that block, we see some descriptive uh, uh, visualization of the contents of the block, and in particular, public versus private. Uh, this block has a relatively small percentage of private transactions, just 1%. Sometimes it's, it's uh, obviously quite a bit more, and we can see all sorts of detail behind it. Now we can go in here and we can look at the individual transactions, click through them. Um, we can see the JSON uh, behind as well. Um, I'm gonna select another, another block here. Um, this one is 5% private, but there we go. So the first transaction at the top of this block, this is block number 1910, is a private transaction. It is labeled as such, and we can see that its journey is quite a bit different. It went from just went straight into the public mem it was straight into confirmed. It never was detected in the public mempool. And so that's the definition of a private transaction. It was transmitted directly to a builder privately. It was not socialized in the peer-to-peer -peer network. And uh, one of the capabilities that uh, EtherNow is really great at is being able to understand how private transactions affect ordering, um, where they appear in, in blocks, etc. And so you can click through and do all of that. Now, there's some really powerful features here and capabilities that I want to go through, but before I do, I want to show here's a transaction. Now, one of the things that's nice about EtherNow is it's all static URLs. So if you're using this and you find something interesting and you want to share it with um, a coworker or a friend, copy and paste the URL, uh, send it across and they'll go exactly here, but um, or they'll go to exactly what you're looking for. Here is a much richer um, uh, transaction journey. You can see this was one that's been replaced many, many times. Um, each one of these, by the way, are clickable here, um, but it sort of shows you the complexity of that. Um, so you might spot interesting transactions. Those are always fun. And then similarly, um, here is a block. This is block um, you know, 1577, and it's a very curious block. It has just five transactions, and it's 100% private. And so interesting that there would be a block that would be created. This happens to be, I believe, Beaver was the builder. And we can look and we can see that every single one of the transactions here are private. And so um, pretty interesting to sort of go through all of that. Now, I will... Um, flip back to uh, the live feed. So we'll be looking at the public mempool. Actually, let me just pop it up over here. It's probably a little bit easier. Um, and it's all filterable. So the next big feature I wanna share with you are filters. And there's a couple of different ways to, to get to them. Um, one is you click this filter interface and we have a, a small number of 
pre-built uh, filters that we've created. If you click Add Address, I can say Uniswap right here. This is a few of the Uniswap um, smart contracts, but it's pretty cool when I click Apply, it filters everything. So I can see right now there are six transactions in the public mempool that match the criteria of this filter. In uh, this block uh, right here, 1925, I can see the specific transactions that applied to this filter. Here we can see Uniswap v2. And so um, it's pretty neat to be able to go through this dynamically. Now I can clear this and clear that right now and we just go back to the default default view. But there's also, if we go down here to the bottom of the filter command, there are these fields that you can filter on. And we're going to be building this out over time, but it's still pretty powerful. So just for illustration purposes, I will select status here. And now you can see we get these Boolean values. We'll be building that out. But let's just say uh, select status is confirmed. And when I hit apply, um, now what happens is there are no transactions in the public mempool that match my filter. Why? Because they're all pending. None of them are confirmed. That's why there's zero here. And then we can see in the blocks what number of the transactions are confirmed um, overall. And it's not 100%. What's much more interesting is if we flip the is to is not confirmed and hit apply. And now, of course, the public mempool shows back up because they're all pending. They're not confirmed. But we can isolate in these blocks over here the failed transactions. So um, each one of these, let's see here, there's one, right? It's a failed private transaction. Um, there's a failed private transaction as well. So it allows you to very quickly sort of filter through the, um, the, the mempool and the transactions in block for specific addresses, for specific characteristics, and um, allows you to slice and dice this in real time in this really sort of fluid way. Now there's one more way to do this, and I'll just show you a, a quick example of that now. Um, here's a block with 111 transactions in it. I'm just gonna click through a few to see if I can find an address that I recognize. Um, well, let's say this address right here is an interesting one created by, there's a little control on the side where if I click this, it basically will dynamically create a filter based on that address. So I can now apply this and I can see all of the transactions where the from is that address and you know here's another one. So this address is pretty active right now. And so it's, it's pretty powerful sort of how you can um, really fluidly navigate um, uh, uh, the, the public mempool. Now, if you'd like to build these and save them, um, what you can do is you can log in and we provide two mechanisms for logging in. One is to connect a wallet. The other is to connect with email. These are separate. We don't make any attempt to try to um, associate your wallet address with your email address, but realize if you build a bunch of filters and save them in one, then that's where they're going to be. So just be uh, thoughtful about that. But I'm going to go ahead and connect my wallet. Um, this is using our Web3 onboard library. It's a very popular library for connecting wallets flexibly to applications. So if you're building any front end and need a, a great library, check out Web3 Onboard. I'm going to select MetaMask um, and I need to go over here and sign. Now you notice I have these across the top. And if I go over here to the left to my searches, I can see some of the stuff I've done before. So for instance, let's take a look and select that one. And then right away, we're now just looking at the public mempool and blocks for Tether versus USDC, it's quite a significant percentage actually of total Ethereum transactions tend to be these two stable coins. Now we can actually compare this, if I go back to my searches, um, to smaller stable coins. I have a bunch of them here, DAI, BUSD, PYUSD, TUSD, and view that. And what we see is there's many fewer stablecoin transactions involving those stablecoins. So um, it's pretty interesting to see the relative ratios for, for that sort of thing. You can see I have a relatively complex filter with a number of two addresses and ors in between. And so you can mix and match in, in interesting and creative ways to create searches and capabilities. And so we think this is a really powerful um, capability as well. Now you can um, 
uh, search on transactions or transaction hashes or blocks here as well. And we have a couple of other cool features here. One is this is all real-time data. And so you might notice something go by and you go, oh, that's super interesting, but it passed by. I wish I had a record of all of that. Well, we, we got you. We have a, a global mempool data archive, which is uh, now open source for non-commercial use for research purposes under Creative Commons license. And you can access that right here. It's a mempool. Here you can see our mempool data archive program. A few steps, you can get access to the historic data. It's quite large, uh, 8.7 terabytes and growing, 16.5 billion transaction events. So great for researchers if you're, if you're one of those. And then um, finally, if you're watching transactions and seeing how they get manipulated and, and getting worried about your transactions and, and you want to protect them, we offer a capability called Transaction Boost, um, which is a private RPC endpoint aggregator, effectively send a transaction to our um, private RPC endpoint, and you can specify in your transaction which um, uh, private builders you want it to go to and what sort of criteria you'd like to have in there. And then we provide observability into those transactions. So you can understand transaction status, even though it's private and moving through uh, other private aggregators and, and RPC endpoints. And um, uh, here's an example of a transaction that was submitted through Transaction Boost, and it gets a new tab. So before we had details in JSON, and now we have Boost, and we can see that this boosted transaction went to Beaver. It was forwarded uh, to MevShare, and this transaction received a rebate of uh, 1.6 ETH, or over $3,000, so pretty cool. Um, and so that's another powerful capability of our observability platform. So so that was a lot. Hopefully that gives you a good sense of some of what you can do with Ether now. Um, we'd love to hear from you. If you see things that doesn't make sense or you have feature requests or you want to contact us, you can uh, pop over to this feedback form and our team will receive that and be res as responsive as possible. And just really appreciate you taking a look and checking out Ether now. Thanks so much.